إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النهر All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty the one and only the Creator I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. Last session, we stopped at verse 12 of Surah an naba where Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the issue of the mountains, the, the heavens. And we mentioned the narration of Ibn Mas'ud. May Allah be pleased with him. That is recorded by Al-Imam Al-Bayhaqi that the distance between each two heavens is a traveling distance of 500 years and that the thickness of each heaven is also a journey of 500 years. Let me elaborate a little bit more on the issue of the heavens. And let me quote a couple of narrations the first of which was by Ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him. That the similitude of the earth to the heaven is the similitude of a ring that you throw in an open desert. And the similitude of the first heaven as compared to the second is like a ring thrown in an open desert. And likewise in each one of the heavens to the next after it. Abu Dharr al-Ghifari, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, 
the seven heavens, when compared to the kursi, and the kursi, as Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, he said, the kursi is the place of, is the stool for the feet to set on. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the similitude of the seven heavens, when compared to the kursi, is like that of a ring thrown in an open desert. And the similitude of the kursi, when compared to the throne of Allah, the Almighty, the Magnificent, is like that of, an, of a ring thrown in an open desert. Ibn Abbas comments saying, no one can describe or understand or perceive the size, the magnificent size of the throne of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Brothers and sisters, please contemplate on these texts. If we want to know the greatness, the glory, the magnificence of our Lord, of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, let us contemplate on what is being said. Let us think. Allah Azza wa Jal has created all these creations, including His throne. And Him subhanahu wa ta'ala being established, ascending, over his throne does not mean that he is encompassed by that throne. As a matter of fact, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a firmly, firmly believe and affirm the attribute of Istiwa ascending above his throne to Allah Azza wa Jal, unlike other deviant sects who negate that, who change the meaning of that, and haven't touched upon the issue of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let me go in some details because the matter is of importance. The names of Allah Azza wa Jal and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. The names of Allah Azza wa Jal all refer to His essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So though they are different names, yet they all refer to the essence of one, to the essence of the one, to the essence of Allah, the Almighty. Whereas the attributes of Allah differ, because of the difference of the meanings they hold. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, stated something similar to that. He said, we know that all the names of Allah, the Almighty, agree in that they all refer to the essence of Allah Azza wa Jal. Even though they are different and have different meanings, yet they are in agreement in the sense that they all refer to the essence of one entity, to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is where many sects deviated. When they did not apply the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, in verse 11 of chapter Ashura, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is none like unto him. There is none like unto him. And this verse, when it was not applied, when it was not understood and applied properly, people deviated. People slipped away. Some said, how can we claim that Allah has a hand. Then we're saying that Allah is like us, has a hand. 
has a foot, has a face. Yes, we, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, affirm these attributes to Allah Azza wa Jal and believe in them as part of our faith. But we also believe that Allah is above and high and purified from resemblance, from the likeness to His creatures, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed us, commanded us, instructed us not to give similitude to Him. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in chapter An-Nahl, verse 74, فَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ فَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ So put not forward similitude for Allah. So these two verses safeguard a person from slipping. أهل السنة والجماعة affirm all names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal that came through authentic texts. And they believe in them and take their apparent meaning without denying, distorting, resembling Allah to His creatures, without asking how, without trying to interpret these names and attributes and with purifying Allah Azza wa Jal and holding Him at the status He is worthy of, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some deviant sects, and we will touch upon this real quick, slipped away. The Jahmis, who are followers of Jahm ibn Safwan, negated both names and attributes of Allah, and that's why scholars ruled them to be out of the fold of Islam. Al-Mu'tazila, who are followers of Wasil ibn Ata', who was one of the students of Al-Hasan al-Basri, and then he deviated, left the, the, the classes of Al-Hasan al-Basri, and had or held his own classes, and the followers of this school or of Al-Mu'tazila, they affirm the names of Allah Azza wa Jal, but they strip it from its meaning. They say Allah is hearing, but without hearing. We don't know how hearing is, and we don't know what. So they affirm the name, but they strip it from its value and essence. And they uh, negate and reject the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al Ash'ari, followers of Abu Al Hassan Al Ash'ari, who deviated or rather who uh, split from Al Mu'tazila after he had a dispute with his Shaykh Abu Ali Muhammad Al Jubba'i. Uh, but later in his life, he renounced his own school and he went back to the school of Ahlul Sunnah uh, Wal Jama'ah. But his followers uh, affirmed the names of Allah and some of the attributes of Allah. The most famous narration is that they affirm only seven attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and then deny everything else. Uh, last example I, I want to mention here is Al-Maturidiya. They are followers of Abu Mansur or Abu Mansur Al-Maturidi. Uh, they're very similar to Al-Ashairah. They affirm the names of Allah Azza wa Jal and some of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. With this, we will conclude this session and continue, inshallah, in the following session. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha.